This is Code.org. What do we got here? The Joyful Pastries food truck owner, again, I'm saying it's us, needs a way to easily update flavor or price of their dessert objects. So we're going to have to import this. Doop, doop. If you don't have it, like any, always click there. Uh, don't click delete. I love doing that. And that is not great. All right. Write the mutator method, which is just the setter method. It's going to mutate or change a variable for the instant variable in the dessert variables in the dessert class. And I'm right here on my dessert class. So that's going to be this and this. So we need setters for flavor and price. And notice we have get flavor, get price. So I'm going to make my life easier. So we have getters and I'm going to right click copy. You could control C on a Windows machine or command C on a Mac. And then I'm going to write, I'm just going to do control uh, V for paste. Now, string, you got to be careful when you do this because it often leads to mistakes. But that being said, public void, because we're not returning anything with a setter, we're setting the flavor. Set the value of flavor. So I'm doing the same down here. I need to do void and set. Okay, and now both of these have to take in a parameter. What will that parameter be? It's going to be for flavor, it's a string. For price, it's a double. So string is capitalized in Java. I'll just call my new flavor. Yep, and then down here, this is a double new price. Now we're not returning anything where you giving it a new value. So I'm going to take this flavor variable and do equals new flavor and price. So now when this is called, we're going to pass it a parameter and we're going to actually set the value, the instance variable way up here. Now, the reason we have to set these through a method is they're private. So we're not allowing a user to directly access these. We are allowing them to call a method to do so. All right. So now in the food truck runner, I'm actually just going to hit run now because it will catch bugs sometimes, even if I'm halfway done and it's better to catch them early. So it's saying, all right, this looks good so far. In the food truck runner, instantiate a dessert object. Level six, that is us. So I need to instantiate a new dessert object, okay? And let me go over to our class here. What is the constructor? So there is a default constructor of plane, or we could pass some parameters. I'll actually leave it as default, unless it asks me not to. Okay, great. So I'm gonna leave that as default. Ooh, and now it wants us to prompt the user. Let's see. Now, if you're getting stuck on things like this, please make sure you're always using um, their helpful, their tips down here. They can help clarify. All right, so we have to prompt a user. Now, to prompt a user, what we do is we're gonna print out a prompt. I'll just say enter a flavor. Um, and I'm not doing println for a very good reason, I think. I want them to be able to enter their answer right next to it. If I do println, that forces their answer to be on a line below this question. So enter a new flavor. And now how do we, that first I need a string and I'll just call it new flavor again. And this is gonna be equal to input dot and the reason this works, guys, is we have the scanner class being imported here, and that's what's getting used to allow us to do this functionality. Now, it's going to be similar functionality for price, so I'm going to copy, paste, enter a price. Wow, we're letting them pick a price. I guess it's the owner. New price. Next line. This will be a double. Great. That's all looking good. And then and update the assigned value. So I could update them right here, but just because of the order of this, I'm now gonna update them down here. And how do I do that? I use our setter method. So I name my dessert yum. Of course, if you named your something else, you should uh, be using that object, whatever the name is. Uh, new flavor, new price. Be sure to check if the user provided. Interesting. Okay, uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and print these. The new flavor is, the new price is. All right, let's see if I broke everything.
Ooh, this is tricky. Remember guys, uh, from way back, next line is for strings. So if you're stuck on that, head over to documentation and go ahead and look at the documentations for scanner. I know, I remember that we actually are gonna need a next double here because this is a double value. Looking better, uh, my flavor will be sugar. My price will be 565. And look, new flavor sugar, price is 565. That's all looking great. Now I'm curious what they mean by this. I think let's hit test. So this is passing. I'm gonna go ahead and do this though. It wants a valid value. So a string's always gonna be valid. We could check if there's actually anything entered and if not, reject it. Maybe I'll do that. And so just a quick conditional here. I'll do to equals equals empty, right? So if there's nothing there, uh, just return, which means don't do anything. Now down here for price, I'll say, if price, uh, we can limit it, right? What if they go negative or zero? So I'm gonna do is less than or equal to, I guess just less than zero, something like this. Uh, price equals zero. Um, since it's a double, it won't really matter, but I can just do that. Uh, you can set a max too. I've seen students set it at like 100. They're like, that's a ridiculous price for desserts. Kind of up for to you here. Let's uh, run again. Looking good, test, cool, onward.